Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. In this video, we're going to talk about filters in Lightroom. But I need to make a distinction right off the top. If someone says they used a filter in Lightroom, they're not talking about a develop or processing filter, like a warming filter or a cooling filter or a grunge filter. When someone says they filtered their images in Lightroom, what they're talking about is they took a large group of images and they filtered them down by specific attribute or attributes into a smaller group of images or maybe even into a single image. So it's a way for you to kind of sort your images into a specific group of attributes and or to find a single image. And there's a number of different ways you could filter your images and there's two different areas or two different ways you could actually access filtering. The first place where you could access filtering is available across all the modules. If you look at the film strip at the bottom of your screen and you look directly above it, you'll see this black bar. And to the right of that black bar, you'll see filter. And again, this is available across all the modules. And what you could do here is you could filter the images that are down here in the film strip by a specific attribute. For example, if I want to find just the images down here that have flags turned on, I would go to where it says filter and you can see the very first attribute is a flag. I'll click on it and you can see now we just have flagged images displayed. So I filtered my large set of images down to images that only have the flag turned on. Now, one problem many people encounter when they begin using filters is they say they did this, they found their flagged images, but now maybe they want to find all their images that have red color labels. So they'll go directly over here to the right where the color labels are, and they'll click on the red one, and they won't see anything. And they'll say, I know I have images that have red color labels. Why aren't they showing? Well, you could stack these attributes. And you could see I still have the flag on. So I'm actually searching for images that are flagged and have a red color label. So if you want one or the other, you have to turn the one you don't want off. To turn off the flag, just click on it again. Now I'm seeing down here all the images that have a red color label. So remember, you could stack these. And when you want to turn one off, you have to click on it a second time to toggle it off. So flagged on click again, flagged off. Now the other attributes you could search by is images that don't have any flag at all. Images that are rejected, there are none in this folder. Uh, to the right of that, images that have processing done. So I did some processing to these images. To the right of that, images that don't have processing done. So there was no processing at all done to this image or these images. The next to that are the stars. And there is this qualifier here that you should be aware of. So if I want to see one star images and I click right here, I'm actually seeing images that are greater than or equal to one star. So you can see there's a one star image, there's a three star image, there's a five, and so on. So if I want to see just one star images, I have to click on this qualifier and change it to rating is equal to. Now I'll see equal to one star, equal to two stars, equal to three, four. So that is a way you could see specific star ratings. Again, remember this qualifying uh, qualifier. You could click on it. You could see the greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or equal to, and change it accordingly. When you need to turn your star ratings off for the filtering, the filter star ratings off, click on one star, then click on one star again, and you'll turn that off. That's the easiest way to turn that off. So we already talked about color labels. Just click on one and you could see that color label. There's red, for example. Now to the right of that is a dropdown. The dropdown is actually more applicable to the second place where you could 
filter your images. And the second place is actually a little more powerful. It allows more filtering options than this bar does. But remember, this bar is convenient because it's found across all the modules. This second place where you could filter your images is found only in the library module. So you'd go to the library module and it's actually only found in grid view. So you'd have to hit the G key on your keyboard to go to grid view. And if you look all the way at the top, you'll see this bar here, library filter. Now if you don't see that, hit the backslash key on your keyboard and it toggles that on and off. So you see this library filter up here. Now you can see there's a number of different ways you could filter your images here. And one of the ways is the way we just did it. It's by attribute. And you can see this is exactly what is down here. We could filter by flagged, status, edits, whether it's edited, not edited, star ratings. And again, we have the qualifier for rating of equal to, uh, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. And we have the color labels. We do have something else here, another attribute, all images that are actually images to the right of that are virtual copies. And we'll talk about virtual copies in a future episode. Those pretty much are images that are not actually residing on your hard drive. Just Lightroom kind of uh, knows about it. And it's a duplicate of another image, a real image on your hard drive. So you could process the real image, let's say, for color make a virtual copy of it and process the virtual copy for black and white. So you could have two different processing schemes on the same image, pretty much. To the right of that are video. Now I don't have any video in here. So you would click again to turn it on, click again to turn it off. Now I mentioned that this search or filter capability found in the library module is more powerful. And it is because of this. If you look up here, we could search by text. So I'll click there. And remember I mentioned to get in the habit of entering good keywords. So I could click on text and I could hopefully search for a keyword that might be included on here. I don't know if I added any because I was very lax in keywords, but let's try eagle. No, unfortunately I don't. But one thing you should be aware of is that I'm searching on the actual current folder I'm clicked on over here in the left panel. I could search by more than that, meaning I could go to the parent folder, Buffalo Zoo. See all the times I went to the Buffalo Zoo? All those different times. If I want to click up here, now all my attribute searching, my text searching, any type of searching I do, is searching through all the subfolders. So now I could search for, let's say, lion. And it's looking for any keyword that contains lion. You can see I'm searching by keyword. You could search by any searchable field, file name, copy name, title, caption, and so on, or just click on any searchable field. And then you could put multiple terms here. And, um, and you could, if you hover over there, you'll see there's that little um, tip that pops up. Enter search text here, it said. And then it said to, as I try to get it to go, is you could put an exclamation point in front of the word to exclude it. So that helps you better search for images. Now, in any searchable field, it must contain all those keywords or these qualifiers here, whatever you deem to search by that will help you. So that's the text search. We already talked about the attribute search. And we'll turn, you could search by text and attribute. So I want to find only lions that are flagged or something like that. So I'll turn text off so we don't have that. Next is, and you could always bring this up to the, I always like that up to the top. I'm not sure why. We could search by metadata. We'll click there. And you could see there's different metadata for your camera. You can see there's the date it was taken, the actual camera. Uh, there was an iPhone picture in there, one. You can see the number of images. There's uh, Most of them were taken in Nikon D500, some with a D7000, and four were unknown. Then all these different lenses were used, all for this folder. Now, you could go back into other parent folders. I could go up here to my main parent folder, which is all my 51,722 images, and I could search metadata for all those. And you can see that there's a lot of different cameras used. 
lots of different lenses used, and so on. And that is where this drop-down over here comes in. If we look at this drop-down and I click on it, you can see that I'm right now using the default columns. Let's say I just want to look at exposure info. I'll click on that and you'll notice when I do that the columns at the top will change. And you can see now we have focal length, ISO speed, aperture, shutter speed. So I could search for all images that are just shot at f1.8 at an ISO, let's say, of 100. So there's a way you could do all these different um, searches using all these different um, types of attributes. And again, you could go to this drop-down and get, you know, location columns, um, all these different kind of preset columns for these um, different attributes. You also could create your own. So let's say that um, I would go on any of these. As you see, as I hover over them, you can see how they kind of uh, become active. And if I want to change camera to something else, I could just click on it and change it to, let's say, GPS stat. Or I could change it to flash state. Did fire, did not fire. So all these different metadata search attributes you could use. Furthermore, if I hover over one and I click on this little um, flyout menu, they call it right here, I could either remove this column or add a new column. So I'll remove it. So that column's gone. I'm down to three. I could go to a different flyout menu right here and add a column. So I just added a column. It now says none. So I have to tell it what I want to want to do. I'm going to look for, let's say, um, I don't know what's up there already. Let's go for keyword. So we have all these keywords. I could search by a specific keyword now. And let's say I have this set up for a search that I most often do. So I have this um, set up to search for the date, lens, keyword, and label. And I search for this all the time. I could go to this little drop-down right here, which is actually the same as this little drop-down right here. When I click on that, I could go to Save Current Settings as a new preset. And I'm going to call this um, my test filter. And I'll click Create. Now, in that drop-down, it is there. So I could go to a different one, let's say Flagged. Then I could go to my test filter again. And there's that actual layout I had for my test filter. And again, it's available down here as well. So you could actually create a filter preset. Now, to the right of that is this little lock. If I am looking at just uh, images shot with this specific lens, that's it, just this specific lens. But I go to a different folder. That gets turned off. You see how it got turned off? So I'd have to go back to metadata and go back to that specific lens. But what I could do is lock this lock. And then I could go into these different folders. And it will keep this here. It won't allow it to reset. And so that is what that little padlock is for. Then finally we have none. You can just click on none and it removes all those filters up there so you don't have to be burdened looking at those. So text attribute, metadata, all these different things, and you could create a preset with this flyout over here. You could change any of these um, searchable columns by clicking on the actual column that you want to switch out with a new one. Or you could go to this flyout and add a new column or remove a column. So remember that. Also, you could, if you can't find your parent folder over here, remember just to right click and a little flyout will pop out and you could go to show parent folder and it will show the parent folders. If you don't want your parent folder showing, but you want to search all of the images, go up to where it says catalog and click on all photographs. And once that loads, you still have this search bar up here. Remember the backslash key will make it come and go. And then you could search for text, attribute, whatever, the same way. So that's how you use filters to find either a group of images, let's say all my five-star images, or to find a specific image. I want to find that lion image that was shot on a specific date 
and uh, in a specific place. And you could use it, uh, these search fields, and stack them to find it that way. So I hope that helps you keep your, um, you know, just find images in your Lightroom library. And I encourage you to get in the habit of using keywords, something I didn't do, and I'm kicking myself every day because I didn't. But if you're just starting out and your Lightroom library is relatively uh, fresh, start using keywords when you import your images and you'll find you'll be able to search and find images a lot more efficiently. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.